let's jump into the top what the F month of this very last episode of The Shy. My number one WTF moment, my number one WTF moment, excuse me, was this mess right okay. here. So how much is my little bro worth? Hold oh, on. Don't worry. She did the right thing. No, the right thing would have been to call me. I guess this is the resurrection. Yeah. Woo! We, we got old dude versus, I'm going to call them trigonometry trig. That's what we got going on here. Duda has has now go ahead i was worried when i saw that because you know lena waith is lena waith does this show and so when they had them two brothers that close i was worried she was gonna have them start kissing or something so i was like oh please keep these brothers on the up and up you know here but are you because you just here, never know with her you just go. never know with her you know here. so this guy but. man <laughs> well let's let's go ahead and Try to break Larry bugging already. So, oh. ladies and gentlemen, you have Jake's long lost Australian brother, Trigonometry Trig, has popped back on the scene now that Reds is dead. Who paid the mom of five thousand dollars to have Jake? The question is, is Duda somehow related to them prior to this? I that. But I do know that Trig seems to be hell bent on getting his brother back. Right. And it seems to be one of the main storylines this whole entire season. Trigonometry Trig versus Damn You Duda. Larry, what did you think about the back and forth between those two characters? Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was interesting. You know, it was it was interesting because throughout this series, throughout the first two seasons, you know, this uh this Duda dude. Everybody's been afraid of him. Everybody's been, you know, like deferred to him because, you know, he's like the scary big bad man. And this dude came in like, you're nothing to me. You know, <laughs> he came in like like dude was an underling and was only where he is because dude's been locked up for a number of years. And so it's been like it's going to be interesting mm -hmm. to see how that power dynamic plays out you know, and, and what that means for, for Duda and his own people when they see he's not given the respect that he normally gets, how that's going to affect their mind, you know, when he starts asking them to do stuff. So I don't know, it's going to be interesting. We'll see. We'll see. Well, one, one thing the whole entire back and forth that they never analyze as Duda is saying, nah, I'm kidding. And Trigonometry Trig is like, nah, he needs to be with family. Right. We Jake wants to do. What if Jake don't want to be with Trigonometry Trig? Well, we already saw Duda. in the trailer. We've we got to find. We saw in the trailer from the, you know, from, from the second episode, we saw when dude walked up on him, his little brother walked up on him and just straight just stowed on him, just blah. So we already have some idea how he's going to feel, but you know, I think part of that is because he thought dude was dead. Apparently that's what, that's what Duda said. He thought, you know, his little, mm -hmm. his little brother thinks he's dead. Right. So if he's not dead, I mean, obviously he's not. Now he finds out he's going to have some, some serious emotions to deal with. So, but I think part of that is who told him, you know, it's going to be a matter of who told him he was dead. And if dude ever made any attempts to reach out, like if he, if he was in jail and had written him letters or tried to get word out to him and, and, and they kept him away from him, then I think, you know, uh, Jake may be able to get over it. But if he doesn't, you know, if, if it's something else where, you know, where dude just sort of went to jail and never reached out to Jake, Jake was just going to, I think he's going to be a little, uh, a little hostile towards dude. So. Understood. All right, Larry. My number four WTF moment from this episode of The Shy. Take and I never should have raised them in the city that would rather see their likeness painted up on a brick wall than to see them graduate from college. They were all I had. And this city took them from me. Yeah. 
She was so with that one, Larry. With that one, I'm trying to figure out. So Brandon is dead, but what I couldn't figure out is Brandon dead due to a suicide, which it sounds like they alluded to that, or is he dead? Streets got his ass. Which one was it? I think the streets got him. I think the streets got him. I think because she kept on talking about this city doesn't love anybody. And he, she was talking about how the streets, you know, the, the city took him. And I don't think she would have said that if he killed himself. Oftentimes when people kill themselves, they're mad at the person who, that, that died and not necessarily, you know, the stuff around them. So they're not, they're not going to, she may not have been mad at the city. So, you know, we'll see though. I'll, I'll tell you though, when, when I watched that scene, and this may sound messed up, it didn't feel like so much a funeral for for Jason's character. It felt more like a funeral for what's his name's career. It was almost like they were putting his acting career to bed. They were like, okay, dude's done. Here's a funeral for him. And bam, let's put him in the ground. He's done. He needs to go get a job at, at, at Dick's Sporting Goods or something. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> Man, I I do feel like they done him greasy. Like, you can tell that they rushed that portion to get rid of the character named Brandon. You know, yeah. you would take a character like that and you would create a big buildup, a big hype. It literally took 10 minutes and they tried to lace it up in a great speech given by his mother to really offer character who was basically the main character of the show. So now you've got so many other questions. What's going to happen to his mama? What's going to happen to his stepdad? They're going to continue to have a role in the shot because now that Brandon's gone, what what purpose do they serve? And, yeah. you know, Tiffany Boone's character is gone. So it, it was funny to me how they... I really would like to know how they're trying to say that he really died. I guess we'll have to find out later on. Um, I thought they rushed his death. I felt like they should have built up a little bit to that. But it is. It didn't knock the whole episode. Yeah, I, I, um, so. I thought that. I, I thought that the the person who went missing. I thought it was going to be Jerrica because I thought, okay, that's going to be a way that they can get they can get the whole storyline with the girl missing and then get her off camera away from, you know, Brandon. So they didn't have to work together. But I, since we already knew he got fired, I, I assumed he was coming back dead, but I wasn't sure if he had gotten fired before they started filming or what. So I thought maybe they had worked something. Maybe she would be the person missing. And then that way they weren't ever on camera together or something. They didn't have to work with each other, but you know, somebody else went missing. I'm sure we'll get to that in a minute. So I don't want don't want to spoil anything just yet. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, she's doing other stuff. I mean, she was in that movie the or that TV series, The Hunters, with uh, you know, on on Amazon Prime, where they, she plays a Nazi hunter. Um, she's on another show as well, or another movie. I forgot which one it is, movie or show. So she's been, I think she's been busy, and she's gonna. I guess at this point, may, I don't know. I guess maybe after the whole thing, she was just like deuces, I'm out. Or maybe because after Brandon's character was gone, she didn't have they didn't have a way to really work her into the story or something. I don't know. So, or maybe she'll come back later on this season. I don't know, but you know, I mean, I liked her on the show, but watching this episode, you realize you don't miss her, you know, which is not really a uh, that doesn't that doesn't bode well for your character. Mm -mm. I miss Brandon, but you know, I I didn't feel the stand going. So it is what it is. Yeah. My number three, W Timmon. We've already seen this guy one time and he's made the list. Right. You good, sweetheart. Bad. You must not know who this money belongs to. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, that's why that's why I'm giving him the nickname Trigonometry Kid because he done sat there and took money from Duda. When me and my wife was watching the episode, saw that lady bump into the guy. We knew from jump this was a setup. Yeah, we knew from jump. And yeah. fellas, if there's ever some hot woman that bumps into you, 
you better start doing the Usain Bolt. And I mean, because you might be about to get murk. But Larry Trig to this show, and he has made an instant impact in the first series. Is he real at life? Is he going to bring the smoke? What you think? Yeah, I think he's gonna. I think he's really going to uh, to make it interesting. I think he's. I think he's gonna be. He's gonna. He's really gonna be that that sort of over the top antagonist. We have we have Duda that was that dude before, but now we're gonna take it way over the top. You know, to sort of back because you know they with with Duda he was he was he was a gangster, but he was trying to be more. So he was trying. You know, like now he's talking about maybe running for mayor and doing whatever else. So he can't really be street. And because it's the shy, you really need that sort of street grittiness. You need someone that is a that's a a straight up just street level thug, and so they need someone like like this dude. And you know, I, I think it plays well. You know, it ties in nicely with the whole thing with his little brother and coming back. So he's already got instant beef with with Duda. It just it works well. I'm just you know that whole thing where he stuck that dude up. I mean. Obviously, he he knows. I mean, I, I believe he knew who he was sticking up. You know, I think that's why he went after dude. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. But I will say this: if you are in the South Side of Chicago and you see a, a chick rolling through some an alley with red bottoms, you know that there's nothing's over. There's no good I, happening around there. There's no no dressed up chick wearing red bottoms rolling through an alley in the South Side of mm -hmm. Chicago. Come on, man. That's a straight up distraction. In a trench coat. Yeah. Yeah. In a trench coat. You know, at a, that. A, Come yeah, on, man. A, a, you got to be smarter than coat. that. <laughs> right. And and did you see Buddy? Buddy spun his whole head around. He was doing a solar eclipse. He was like, hey, man. <laughs> and I'm sitting down looking at this big milk dude. dud hair like, dude, you about to get murk. Show sure enough. Here he comes and he gets robbed. But I wonder, did they take inspiration from power? Because we all wanted to see go get into politics and still have the street stuff going. So this makes me wonder, did Lena get a little bit of inspiration from power? And now she's showing us what it would have been like had ghosts gotten to the by saying that in no way am I saying that Duda is the same as Ghost. Nowhere near. Ghost is a couple of levels higher than what Duda is, but it's interesting to see how they're going to play. So Larry, my number two. What the TF moment from this number two? Look, I know I can't take his place, but that ain't going to stop me from having your back like chiropractor. In the house. You know I'm always going to love you, right? Stop being messy, Emmett. No, 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 no. I really, for real, I don't mean it like that. I just. I mean, like you always got a place in my heart, for real. <laughs> yeah, I had I had merge Emmett and the role he's getting ready to step into because when he finds out Keisha's me, he is going to be distraught. He might go real street on us more than what he's doing now. He's also trying to step in and fill the shoes to basically be the new Brandon and take the in the role that Brandon was serving. But right. how do you think Emmett is going to behave now that Keisha is missing? Clearly, he still loves that woman. And, you know, me and my wife are agreeing that Keisha is one of the prettiest people on this show. We hate right. that they had to get her. We'll get to that in a minute. So how is Emmett going to respond to his dear friend being missing? Yeah, I think Emmett's going to go straight. I think Emmett's going to go straight just ham. I think he's... I'm I'm not sure he's gonna go just straight gangster and just start busting on people, but I think he's I think we're gonna see a little bit grittier side to him where he's definitely gonna go go out trying to find her. Uh, you know, I mean he he's he is he is living with his baby mom and and his child, so he's probably gonna try and you know he might try and 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 modulate a little bit, but I think he's gonna go straight ham. But I'll tell you one thing when I was watching this when I was watching this and I had to go look her up online just to make sure it was okay to actually look at her. And it said, it is, she graduated from Howard. So she's a, she's a full fledged adult. But I was like, when did Keisha get so fine? I was like the last first two seasons. I was like, yeah, she's a cute high school what? kid. But then it was like, when did she just get straight fine? You know, 
I mean, she was Man. always cute. She and then all of a sudden, always. this season, she looked great. Yeah. So no, man, she has all like that. It's just that you probably didn't allow yourself to delve in the fact that she looked like she was playing the role of a high schooler. Right. And you're right. you're not a pedophile. Neither am I. So pedophiles. Right. So when you first look at it, you just kind of look at it like, oh, she's just cute. Like you would say, oh, that baby is cute. But right. when you look up her acting credentials and realize the chick is almost 30. Right. Then you can look at her as a man, and be like, okay, she bad, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, she. But having said that, and Kevin is a decent looking young man. I mean, I they did a great job on the cast. I yeah. mean, everybody up there has kind of a, you know, I can meet you in the street, but on are you a good looking person? I can see in my own community, and I think they've done a good job of making. Which leads me, Larry to the number one WTF moment from Shai. And you know what it is already. Take a look at this. Man, I was hurt. Yeah. Man. So if 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 y'all follow my trailer reviews I do before episode, I did one about what was gonna make Kevin grow up. And I mentioned that either she was gonna get missing or she was gonna get killed. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're at that infliction. His sister is missing. Not only is she missing, but just based on that. She had an altercation with someone because if you saw her cell phone looked like it looked like a thumbprint is what cracked it. So when she when however she got missing, it would come on get in my car, walk with me. Something happened. There was an altercation. There was some physical one. Her phone is cracked. It's left there found. It's left there. But the question me and my wife had is crying out, man who has a woman that's that good looking is going to have her in the South side of Chicago at nine o'clock at night. Larry <laughs> answered that. What the, what the well, on, there, there are a lot of trifling dudes out there that don't realize what they have until it's gone, you know, and even then some of them don't realize what they have. So there's a lot of trifling Negroes out there, not just, not just Negro. There's a lot of trifling men out there, period. So, you know, that's, that's what could happen. Um, I will say, I, I feel like the whole thing with them showing Ronnie right there, I feel like that was sort of a, I feel like it was sort of a, um, you know, too obvious of a thing where they were trying to throw us a off. So, yeah, just too obvious of a mm -hmm. misdirection. The only reason why I sort of think, like, maybe not is because, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're trying, you know, if you try and do some double reverse psychology or something, you think, okay, well... They already did all this foreshadowing where they're saying, where like in the bar when when Ronnie was saying that, uh, you know, asking those guys, how do people look at me? Because they were saying people look at you a certain way. And he was like, how do, you, how do people look at me? And he was saying, well, you know, they were saying, well, you took a life. People aren't just going to forget that. They're always going to remember that. And, and the other dude was like, you need to do something to balance the scales. You need to, she said, if you don't want people to see you like that, you need to, you need to have some balance. You need to do something to bring some balance. And so I think that, and his thought, because we already saw in the trailers, he was like, you know, I think it's, you know, God is telling me I need to find this girl. I need to find this girl. I think that's what his, in his mind, he's thinking, if I can find this girl, people will stop thinking of me as the guy who killed this kid and instead the guy who saved this girl. And, and so I think maybe they're trying to throw us some misdirection, thinking like, okay, maybe he kidnapped her so then he can turn around and find her and he can be the hero. But I don't think he's. I don't think he works like that. And on top of that, I don't even know where he would take her because it didn't look like he had like planned on doing this. So I'm not even sure where he would take her. His house has been mm. locked up. You know, I don't even know where dude's sleeping. But I guess we'll see. I don't think. You know, he did um, I don't think he did it. I, but I do I, think he's gonna find her because I think they do want to redeem him. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what's up, Timothy? And what's up, Howard? You know, last she was dating the child predator guy that um, they Emmett got to got ready to beat up. It could mm -hmm. possibly be him coming yeah. back, getting some revenge. I, I'll do a full video sometime this week, maybe Thursday, on who could possibly steal Keisha and take away that beautiful child from this show. And now Kim is going to have to grow up fast because when he finds out his sister is gone, I can see him banning her with Emmett to put together the posse and figure out what the hell is going on with Keisha. And, um, I can't wait, ladies and gentlemen, for this season. It's going to be a good one. Me and Larry live every Monday night to recap what's going on. I will be yeah. making videos in between time, you guys guessing. And we're going to move on to the next subject. Larry, you got something you want to close this particular year? Yeah, there's a couple of things that, that, I, that I wanted to point out with this one. So, um, you know, one of the things is, and this is just my question about this. They, they showed the lesbian scene, so we're going to talk about it. And so one thing I don't oh, understand Lord. is oh, when it comes to, and this, is, this is what it is. I don't understand when it comes to lesbians. If you are a lesbian and you don't like dudes, why do you want dick? Why why are you up there wearing why are you up there with a with a with a, a butch dude or a butch woman who's wearing a strap on? If you want if you want a guy, just why aren't you just with a guy? Why are you I, I don't understand it. And and I'm not claiming that I'm not saying this, I'm not saying this out of hatred or homophobia or anything else. I'm saying this in the most purest sense of the word of me being ignorant on this subject matter. I want someone to explain it to me because I simply don't get it. I want a lesbian to explain it to me. Um, <laughs> what, what the fuck? Look, man. <laughs> because I have had friends, women who have had experiences with women, I understand their plight. Basically, let you do know that women have feelings from the clitoris as well as inside the vagina. And they want to be stimulated both ways. That's why mm. they do that, Larry. It, it, I mean, you, you read books. You, you are verse bro, know that. I'm just Come saying on, if you're a lesbian and you don't like men and you don't like dick, then why are you up there with a woman? What a what a fake dick! I, I just don't get it. If you don't like dick, then why you want dick? Doesn't make sense to me. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. How how is that? How how is that from a woman who's single and doesn't have a man using a sex toy to pleasure herself? But that's different. You're talking about women who like dick. They're just getting. They're just using one that is artificial because they don't have a real one at the time. I'm talking about women who don't actually like men. If you don't like men, then why are you going out there to get a artificial male appendage? If you like women, why are you not just dealing with the woman and what she has? Well, it's just just because you like women doesn't mean that you still don't want that feeling of a penis in you. A box of crayons. You can get a 64 box of crayons, but do you use all the crayons? No. You have a man and you only want a few parts of the man. And the only part of a man that they want to utilize is. I've never seen on a TV show where a gay, a couple of gay dudes have a fake vagina and one of the dudes is putting a fake vagina on him and, and, and acting like that's his. I've never seen anything like that. It doesn't make any sense. I'm just. I'm trying to figure it out. I need to hear it from, that's simply, from a practicing that's, lesbian. That's simply so that because because all that, I see, all I hear is is I, I'm speaking you, for him. a straight man mansplaining lesbianism. I need to hear it from a I need to hear it from a gay woman so I can truly feel like I understand what is. And I'm not asking for someone to divulge all of their sexual intimacies to me. I'm talking about the logistics, the mechanics, the psychology behind it. Hey, I just tried to speak for him. I told you I've got friends down like that. And the difference between a man is that a man likes to put his penis out. And 
they're putting their penis in a hole. It's just not the hole men use into, unless it's a female, but that's the difference. It's still a hole. All right. Well, I still need I still need it not mansplained. I need I need to hear from an actual lesbian who can explain to me the mechanics, the psychology, the logistics, all of it, so I can understand. And I say this not because of some weird, freakish, you know, perversion or anything that I have going on in my mind. I'm just trying to actually get a a understanding of it so that I don't feel like I'm being ignorant or biased moving forward. That's so anyways. I will say this. So this is I'm, I'm time this down below. <laughs> so there are a couple of other points I want to make about this show. So one of them is I think that Kevin is actually going to uh, is actually going to get a girl pregnant this season. So I think that's going to happen. And, and the okay. reason why I think that's going to be is that he's up there hanging out with Emmett. Emmett is saying that I'm going to have your back and and Emmett is going to become the dude that is going to be sort of his new role model. So we, you know, before he was out there hanging out with Brandon, he was, he was, you know, working and doing whatever. Now he's hanging out with Emmett. Emmett's a little player with babies all over the place. And you can see that, that Kevin's already starting that calling the girls up inviting them over, you know, setting everything up for everyone, smoking weed. He's, he's, he's getting into that whole thing sort of like, you know how Emmett is, and so I think he's going to go down that same path, and I think he's going to get a girl pregnant this year. So that's one of my predictions. We'll see how that we'll see how that turns out. Well, he, look, he ain't going to get the girl that, that that's going to wind up dating Kevin because we saw from the trailer he's kissing a militant that's going to be in his new school. She don't seem like she the type that would get pregnant. I mean, I'm not saying that she ain't smashing. She probably is. But she seems like she's the very careful type. Power. Right. So now the other thing I want to mention is that new chick on the show, the one that, that's with, uh, what what'd you call them, trigonometry? So, <laughs> trigonometry so the, tree. <laughs> <laughs> so the new chick that's with him. Now, the actress's name is Jasmine Davis. And I looked her up. I didn't see anything about it on there. But I was wondering, I was like, is that a trans woman? Or is that like a natural born woman? Because when I first saw her and I listened to her, I thought maybe she was trans. But I could be wrong. It doesn't. It's not like it really matters. I just find it as a, if, if she is trans, I just find it as an interesting Thing if they have her playing just a regular non-trans woman or if she's playing a trans woman, it's, it would be interesting to the story that here's this gangster who's really hardcore and killing people and he's with this trans woman. It's not what you generally think of as a dude having a girl on the streets like that. But I don't I'm not sure she is. There was no mention of it on, you know, like when I went to her IMDb page or anything. She actually looks better in her photos on IMDb. She looks a little she looks a little low budget on this. Even though she has nice clothes on and stuff, she looks a little low low rent on this uh on this show. So but um All right. My last two is I have I have a, you know, one is a prediction and one is just sort of an observation. One of them is is Tiff. I just don't really like her right now. Like I feel like in the past when, when we watched it was like we sort of she was always sort of stank towards towards Emmett, but we sort of got it because Emmett was running around really just doing him. He was sort of he was sort of shiftless and, and was messing with all these different chicks, couldn't really hold down a job. He wasn't really doing much for himself or and and then she got pregnant. So we understood why she was a little now she was a little stank towards him. But now it's like dude's trying to be legit. He's he's you know he's working. He's trying. To, he's taking over the food truck thing when his buddy died. He's you know he's got his own spot. I mean he's trying to do what he can do. And and she's still just on straight stank mode with him all the time. Just it, it leaves me not liking her. It feels like she's just sitting up there bagging weed and getting fat, and it's just not a good look. So I'm not feeling her. <laughs> so here's what I got to say about her. You know, a lot of people don't like her because they prefer to see Emmett with Keisha in the first place. Right. But this young lady he's with now, his baby mama. 
And in the beginning, Emmett wasn't doing right by his, you know, and he got upset with Tiff because she was bringing random dudes around for a hot day. Then she got rid of that. And Emmett had to get, Emmett had to become a man. He had to grow up a little bit. And now that Tiff has settled in with him, you're looking at her like, chick, this is all you're going to do. Sit at the house, roll up weed. The thing is, is she selling all that weed? Because she had a huge bag of weed. Is she making profit off the weed? Or is that yeah. just her stash to just smoke and go? Yeah. We do know something is going to happen to her big this season, whether she's going to get a singing contract, whether she's going to be on, whether she's going to be on TV, something is going to happen to her because we've seen the exchange that Emmett Emmett asked her, could he be her manager? And she was like, hell no, you ain't going to be my manager. So we'll just the dynamic works out. Right. So, well, my last thing that I want to mention is, is that I think Jake is going to get his cherry bust. I think Jake is going to become a killer this season. I think he's going to, I think he's going to actually end up becoming a shooter. Oh, yeah. So I don't think that people want to see that happen, but I think that's sort of the route that he's heading into. And now that his his brother's back, his brother's a straight killer. You know, it's not like dude is not, but you know, I think he's I think he's going to be. I think he's gonna I think he's gonna break his cherry this year, and he's gonna become a killer, which is unfortunate. I don't want to see that happen, but I think that's what's gonna happen. So. And it may be, it may be, so for, if it that may does, be for good reason, it may be in defense of like Kevin, or it may be in the process of finding Keisha. Mm -hmm. It may be a good reason, but I think it's going to happen. Yeah, I, I can see that happening. Um, I could also see having to shoot somebody too, which he's already done. Kevin's already shot somebody, but I, I could legitimately have him shooting somebody and it not be an accident. And yeah. the thing that I Papa is kind of the glue that holds these two dudes together. He's right. the he's a medium voice. He's the mainstream voice. He's the one that reigns them in when all that. What are they going to get him involved in? Because he's been like a straight laced dude the whole time. Um, and he's funny. And we love that dynamic with those three kids. How are you going to remain in place as these young men are having to grow up like that? Yeah, that's going to be interesting. I'll tell you the thing that got me watching this was like listening to Kevin and he and, you know, he listens to his sister and he, he absorbs what she says and he understands things in such a way. It's like I could see this dude become a little player like Emmett because it was like when he was talking to with, with Papa about uh about what's her name? I forgot the girl's name, uh, the big John that he was with. But when he was talking to her, he said, when when Papa was saying, what's her name? M. Her, her name begins with the M, but she, right. you know, I call her M. Right. So um, whatever her name is, when 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 um when Papa was saying, hey, I'm going to compliment her hair because he didn't know what to say. And Kev was like, no, don't say that. She's she's smart. She's intelligent. You have you have to approach her from a more, uh, you know, from a more intellectual standpoint, you know, talk of, you know, say something else. Or I forgot whatever he said to her. But it was just like he was very aware. It was like it was like he was very aware of what different girls wanted and needed. And and I was like. That's a dangerous combination. That's a, that's a dangerous thing to have when you're like 14, 15 years old because a lot of girls, you know, they're just extra thirsty for someone to love them and give them attention. And somebody who seems like they connect with them, whoo, I mean, you could, you, could, you could become an Emmett, you know? You could run around and end up having, you know, three, four babies before you know. So, anyways, it'll be interesting to see what happens with them. Hey. The girl's name is Maisha, and you know, Papa could be the next Big Papa. I mean, Big Papa's role model. That's why he's so smooth like that. <laughs> and he's going to be dating my this whole season anyway. Right. But Maisha is no nonsense. Yeah. Maisha don't have, she ain't playing that. So Papa go off the reservation. She might slap his ass back in the next year. We'll just see how it goes, man. I think it's going to be a good season. I'm interested. Yeah. All right. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
That is our rundown of The Shy, season three, episode one. Be sure to watch my videos on the trailer reviews that I do where we break them down, look for what's going to happen on the next episode.